All right, welcome beautiful people. So, for the past couple of weeks, I've been thinking about how important it is to get a diagnosis of this illness because I've been cleared of the idea of me having to now. I tested in 2013, I tested it in 2022, and I got the results in 2023. So now it's like, okay, I think I have something similar to TMAO. And right before I, w I left Miami, I was speaking to an endocrinologist and she said she was gonna send some information to the NIH, which basically was going to be, she was gonna send the information to the Undiagnosed Diseases Network in order to get some response back within a matter of two months. Um, I did some digging, did some more research, or it's light research, to be honest, light research in terms of, you know, just searching up any other di undiagnosed disease type of organizations. And I found, stumbled upon something called GARD. And I want to show you this. So GARD right here is the Genetic and Rare Diseases Information Center. Did I change my, I did not change it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, I changed it now. Okay, GARD is the Genetic and Rare Diseases Information Center. This is a website that provides you with a library of a number of just rare diseases and how to get it, get them diagnosed. And if you have a problem of some type of rare disease and you don't understand what it could be, there is a hotline for it. And it says, I can get help. And it tells you, um, you can speak to someone that will have some information on getting, that can provide you information on getting a diagnosis for a rare disease and you can discover resources, disease experts, and clinical studies on the rare disease. And this toll-free number. I contacted, did I change my camera? Yes, I did. I contacted the rare disease person or the, you know, I called, called them up and I spoke to a woman. Um, she provided me some information um, and she actually sent me an email about, uh, about certain she talked about the Undiagnosed Disease Network because it's the biggest network to try to get some doctors or even specialists to try to figure out what's wrong with you. The problem is, since it's the biggest, the largest one, there's so many people that apply to it. So it might take months or maybe even years if they're interested in your information, interested in trying to diagnose your illness. It might take months or years for them to actually look into your things. So. I'm going to show you what they, what the agent showed me or sent me through the email. Oops. Is it on? I think I switched it. Great. So this is the email the agent sent to me. Now I do have to say that the, e the email that she sent to me was, or when I was speaking to her, she didn't have a good understanding of what, I, I guess I didn't explain it correctly because basically what I said was my illness is similar to tape to T Mal where I, there's certain foods I eat that if I eat them, my body doesn't process them properly, which just causes me to smell terribly. Um, and for some reason she took it like, like I was, I was, uh, like I had like a skin condition or something, even though I'm basically saying there's something wrong with my digestive system. She took it like I had something wrong with my skin. So she recommended me to see dermatologists that's within Jacksonville. Um, is my thing on? Great. Yes, it is. Great. So she sent me some information about, uh, uh, you know, a, derm a dermatology office and another office of dermatology within North Carolina, Winston-Salem. But at the bottom, oh, and then she, there's also some information about clinical genomics, with it, which is in Jacksonville, where I'm at currently. But here in this section, there is a number of other centers that also have some type of undiagnosed diseases program. Um, right here is Cedars Sinai, uh, that's located in South Calif uh, Southern California, South California. And then there's something called Emory University in Atlanta, and it has a special diagnostic service. And then there's a New York Presbyterian Discover program. Um, and then there's something in Alabama, in the University of Alabama, about having an undiagnosed diseases program as well. Now, again, keep talking about the undiagnosed diseases network. At the bottom here, it tells you about the 12 clinical sites that are um, operating within the UDN. I already clicked on it, so you can look at it yourself. Am I still showing? Yes, I am. Great. And you see here, there is a map of the undiagnosed diseases network. 
And at the bottom, you see the different sites, states and cities. Um, many, many of them are hosted within a university, like in Bethesda, oh, but, well, Bethesda, Maryland, it's not. Bethesda, Maryland is not in a university, but you have one in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, Boston, Massachusetts, which is at the Harvard Medical School, Duke University, Houston, Texas, uh, Baylor College of Medicine, Miami, Florida. Now, here's the thing. Miami, Florida. Everybody, did I switch? Yes, I did. Hello. Miami, Florida, University of Medicine. I actually, I didn't know that Miami was the main place or one of the main sites of the Undiagnosed Diseases Network. So when I spoke to the geneticist, she was a part of the Undiagnosed Diseases Network, the geneticist I spoke to, and she asked me for my blood and urine samples. But to be fair, like she wasn't really that helpful. And I guess, I guess she wasn't helpful because I didn't really have any type of uh, information to provide her to see like a, a list of different families that could have, and you know, pass down this, this genetic disease. I don't even know what the hell it is, you know? So we just search for the basic things, which blood samples and urine samples, and they only have mild um, abnormalities. I think that's what she told me, but didn't have any, it didn't have any things that could uh, suggest that there is some type of metabolic disorder. So after that, uh, after that, after the two different uh, occasions I saw her, she just stopped contacting me or communicating with me. But I didn't know that Miami was like one of the biggest places within Florida to go for undiagnosed disease illnesses. I should have spoken to other geneticists because there were plenty of other geneticists within Miami. And, I, and since I didn't really have that much good help with her, I could have spoken to other ones, which makes me mad that I left Miami, but that's another situation. The point I'm trying to make here is um, there is a number of different places around the United States. So if you are, are in uh, Seattle, Washington or Salt Lake City, Utah, you might be able to contact many of these places, these centers or universities and try to get some type of illness uh, to try to get them to look into this illness that you might have. Uh, so I'm going to drop a link to all these things for the hotline. I'm going to drop a link to this, to this this map that shows the different centers and universities that look for undiagnosed illnesses. The last thing I wanted to show was trimethylamineuria. So like I said before, um, I think I changed my thing, and I did. Like I said before, uh, Guard has like this 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 listing of just different diseases from zero to, you know, from digits, digits, <laughs> digits, from numbers all the way to Z. So I guess alphanumeric. Um, and I found a, a passage or at least a, a collection of, not collection, yeah, it's a, a collection of data that's relating to trimethylamine manuria. And there's a lot of interesting things that I saw in this one um, section here. It tells you which doctors they recommend to go to if you're suffering from trimethylamineuria, like a primary care provider and a geneticist. But there's also another additional specialist that they think might help in determining if you have trimethylamineuria. And some of these actual doctor names or specialists I have never heard of, like nephrologists. I have never heard of nephrologists. And it's a kidney doctor, which makes me want to actually look into kidney doctors. Or, uh, I don't know what this is, Otto, I, don't, I can't even, oh, this is ears, nose, and throat doctors. I've heard of that. Orthopedist, isn't that a foot doctor? No, that's a bone doctor. But another thing that's interesting is about the disease and gives you a summary of what the disease is, um, tells you the symptoms, which are a lot of just psychological <laughs> symptoms, like anxiety, depression, paranoia, aggressive behavior, emotional ability. You can look it to yourself. I'll provide the links down below as well. Uh, is there anything else I want to say? I mean, I did I did go to a primary care physician just recently this week. I was on a Monday, and yeah, it made me uh, made me realize, made me feel like my diet's not working or it's just getting worse, and maybe it has to something to do with sugar uh, because I'm still I'm not consuming sugar, but I'm eating like fruit. So I'm thinking maybe I should just stop 
consuming anything that has anything sugar in it because I eat sweet potatoes, I eat apples. I've been eating apples and oranges and stuff. Carrots, carrots have sugar in it too. Um, or they're sweet. So maybe I should try to do stop doing that. People ask me about Jacksonville. Like the only, <laughs> the only times I go outside is on the weekends. And I usually just go to Walmart or I go to Publix. Um, I walk around, like sometimes I try to go outside and just walk around areas, but I don't like go out and do stuff. I don't like go out, ooh, let me go out to a bar. Let me go out to a nightclub. I'm pretty sure there's nightclubs. I'm pretty sure there's got bars. When I was in Miami, I went to a lot of strip clubs. I, I don't feel like, I think I'm over the strip club phase. I think I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm tired of seeing ass and titties, but I guess I'm tired of paying money to see ass and titties. I don't know. Um, it's over 10 minutes. I think this was a good one. Uh, at least, a, but whatever. In any case, uh, yeah, I don't know. I At this moment, it's weird because people are reacting to me when I feel like I'm in a clean diet. So I'm not going to really go out there and be around a lot of people like I used to within Miami. But that's a whole other conversation. Um, I'm going to end it right here. Thanks for listening. And watching. Bye.